Hey, Fellowship of Praise, we're so glad that you have joined us online today. My name is Ellie, and I'm the Communication Director here at Fellowship of Praise. And I'm Chandler Demler, and I am support staff here at Fellowship of Praise. And I am Bobby Morgan, one of the senior pastors here at FOP. Hey, we're so excited that you've joined us online. If this is your first time and you'd like to get more information about our church, go ahead and fill out an info form online, and we'll, uh, we'll get in touch with you. Yeah, and mark your calendars for our kids' Christmas play happening on Wednesday, December 2nd at 7 p.m. They've been working so hard on this Christmas play. You do not want to miss it. So mark your calendars, Wednesday, December 2nd, 7 p.m. here at the church. And if you want to have an opportunity to bless some kiddos in the community, our angel tree is going on right now. So if you want to go online and check that out, you will be blessed. Why don't you check out the service right now? Come on and join us.
message is titled at all times so you know where I'm going at all times Psalms 34 at all times we're going to praise him at all times his praise shall continually be in our mouth and I want to read from Psalms 34 beginning with verse 1 this is a psalm of David and he says I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. One translation says, I will praise the Lord every chance I get. See, this is, this is our wheelhouse here at the Fellowship of Praise. We love to talk about worship and praise because He is worthy. He is worthy of praise and He is worthy of worship. And this Thanksgiving, we should really just pour out the thanks giving towards God. I will bless him every chance I get. Verse 2, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Now, he's talking about those men that came to him. The scripture said that they came in 1 Samuel 22. Do you know they were called a 3D army? They were in distress. They were in debt. And they were discontented. And, and I like, you know, one, one translation calls it like this. I think it's the message. It says they were losers, vagrants, and misfits. <laughs> you think you got it bad. They were losers, vagrants, misfits. About 400 showed up. And they're all complaining and all upset. And then David starts to praise the Lord. And they're watching him. He said they will hear this. They're beat down. They're humbled. They will hear this and they will be glad. Just like last week when Paul and Silas began to praise at about midnight in prison, the Bible said that the prisoners were listening. So somebody's watching you. No matter what your situation, somebody is watching you right now, and they're trying to see, do they really worship the Lord? Do they really believe what they say? The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Now, we know magnify, magnifying glass. But we're not making God bigger. We're just seeing him for who he is. Oh, magnify the Lord. You can't make God bigger. You, you might have a low opinion of God. You won't make him smaller. You can't change God. God's God. But you can get on board and magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant, and their faces were not ashamed. Now, I did a little study on that word there, ashamed. And I won't go through the Hebrew word, but what it actually means is ashamed like embarrassed. That like they didn't, the only way I could say this is, is I was kind of a late bloomer. I mean, in today's standards, I was a very late bloomer. But I didn't have my first girl, girlfriend until right before the 11th grade. Is that a late bloomer? I know. Some of y'all take your seven-year-olds and drop them off. at the, Well, you used to drop them off at the movies when you went to the movies. Well, praise the Lord for that. I'm glad that shut down for that reason alone. <laughs> you had a lesson, daters. <laughs> I don't think you should have 30 girlfriends before you find the one. But... Anyway, I was kind of a late bloomer. I regress here. <laughs> I regret. And I remember when people started finding out that I had a girlfriend. My parents, I didn't want my parents to find out. She, she wasn't a bad, she was a good girl, really good girl. But I didn't want my, I was just, I was just not ashamed and not embarrassed. But I was afraid to show my feelings. Does anybody understand what I'm saying here? That's actually what this word means. It doesn't mean that you're ashamed of God. It doesn't mean that you're embarrassed about God. It means that there are people that feel like, even though God has done so much for us, 
They are stoic in their worship and in their adoration. Oh, man, they love the Bengals or the Bungles, whatever you want to call them. They love the Reds, love Ohio State. But when it comes to worship, you know how I am. Really? Listen to this. They do not hide your feelings. He said their faces, when they see and experience God, they will not hide their feelings. I believe God is looking for a people that will not hide or suppress their feelings, but they will worship Him in spirit and in truth. Then he said, this poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. He pulled me out of a tight spot is what he's saying. He saved me. He delivered me out of a tight spot. Now, I want to share something with you, just a thought. And this thought is all about worship and about praise. But I believe, because of the Bible as an example, I believe that God enjoys our praise. The Bible said He inhabits the praise. I'm only going to inhabit where I want to be. You, you've lived somewhere before and said, well, I'm not, I'm not staying here. I'm here. This is just situational. This is where I'm at right now in life, but this, is, this isn't where I'm staying. Maybe you drove a car that's like, that's not the car I'm going to drive. Anybody know what I'm saying? My brother was driving a car, and the wheel came off and passed him going down the road. He's like, Who's, that wheel just passed me. Oh, that's my wheel. <laughs> But you're going to another place. But if you inhabit something, that means you love it and you love the expression that comes from it. And when we worship and when we praise, God does more than enjoy our praise. He expects it. I'll give you scriptures. Just a few. I've got a lot, but I'll give you a few. I'll just give you a few. There were ten leprous men. They kept their distance, legally kept their distance, more than six foot. They cried with a loud voice to Jesus, have mercy on us. And Jesus kept the law. Did you know that? The Bible said he didn't come to destroy it, but fulfill it. So he kept it. And he said to them, go show yourself to the priest. Now that was out of order because you had to be healed to go to the priest and say, look, examine me. They, they did the whole physical. Examine me, see if I'm, I'm healed. But he said, go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible said that as they were walking, they started, they could tell. I mean, they, they started becoming healed. And with leprosy, we know that fingers and ears and toes, they, they, the extremities would fall off. So who knows? Maybe they started growing fingers and ears. And, and looking at each other like, we are healed. And the Bible said one of those lepers, he wasn't fully obedient. At least we don't know. Maybe later. But he turned around and ran back to Jesus. And the Bible said he fell at his feet and he worshipped him. And what did Jesus say? Where are the other nine? Not only does he enjoy our worship, he expects it. He expects it. In John 4, he's with a woman at a well, a Samaritan woman. Jesus said, I must needs go there. In other words, he had a strong urgency to go to a place that would reject him. And as a Jew, he would reject them. But he said, no, I'm breaking down all of these walls. I'm breaking down the gender wall. I'm breaking down the race wall. I'm going. I'm going. I've got to go. And he meets this woman. They begin to talk. And, and lo and behold, she brings up the topic of worship. She said, you worship on this mountain. We worship on this mountain. You can go to those same mountains today and see those. She said, we worship here. You worship here. And Jesus just stops her. He's like, no. The time is coming and now is that the true worshipers will worship in spirit and in truth. And look at this. This is insight. This is insight from Jesus. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. He is looking for worshipers. That alone should be the reason you should worship. Because He has been looking for worshipers. For that reason alone, Lord, I praise you. I praise you. I thank you. For that because He's looking for a worshiper. Let Him find me. Let Him find you. 
He's looking for worship. Look at Jericho. You know, that, that was the first enemy. When they crossed the Jordan, Israel crossed the Jordan River, and they would have to go through nation after nation. But the very first one was a place called Jericho. And it was impenetrable. It, it was a stronghold. had a wall outside of it. They said you could race chariots on that wall three wide. That's how thick that wall was. Now, I've been there in Israel to see pieces of it. Archaeology has gone down and found it. And, and they came to that wall, and this is what God instructed. He said, just, just walk around it. March. March today. I don't know what that day was. Let's just say Monday. He said, March on Tuesday. Just march. And just, shh, shh. Don't say anything. Tell somebody, shh. There are churches like that. You know it. Shh. You, three days. Four days, five days. They're inside Jericho. They're just spying out. Like, what are they doing now? They're just marching. Boy, they march really quiet. Six days. And then he said, on the seventh day, do that same thing six times. Now, I'm going to tell you why this happens like this. It's called contrast. Contrast. Because it wasn't a particular day, it was a particular way. So on the seventh day, he said, do it six times. We're just going, for the naysayers and for those who say, well, it was just on this day. He does that on this. We want them to know, no, he doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. He doesn't do it. He does it. Six times they go around it. Then on the seventh time, he said, now worship and shout, for God has given you the victory. And they began to praise and to worship and to shout and to make it loud. And, and when they turned it up, God brought it down. It came down. The enemy comes down. What God was saying in this illustration is that your worship breaks down walls. Paul and Silas knew it opened gates, opens doors, takes off chains, opens doors. Hey, your worship makes things happen. When you begin to praise, you might think, well, that's just, you know, that's just, nobody sees this. You might be in your car somewhere or, or in your bedroom or in a closet somewhere or, or in a little cubicle. But when you begin to praise, something happens and the world, the earth has to know to respond to it. It happened in Acts 16 with an earthquake. It happened right there. The, the world knows to respond to it. A lot of people don't understand this, but the world knows. Second Chronicles 20, we started that at the beginning of this year because it's 2020. A lot of people were preaching vision, which of course uh, you would think vision 2020. And uh, God gave me a message on hindsight. And lo and behold, this is going to be a year you will never forget. It will live in infamy as hindsight. But the scripture, the passage came from 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20. Believe the Lord your God, so, should, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Believe God. And Jehoshaphat is surrounded he surrounded, like, we've been surrounded this year. I don't know if you know this or not, but he was surrounded by Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, and then the Bible said, and others, and others. Got to love that. So we've been surrounded with COVID-19 or, 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 or racism. I mean, we've, we've been sort of a, a political year. We've been surrounded by all kinds of social unrest and others. Some of you know specifics, and others, and others. It just hit us everywhere. Economy, others, just keeps hitting. Jehoshaphat was so distraught that he went before God, and he said, God, I don't know what to do. This is a powerful statement. He said, but my eyes are on you. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at here, what's going to happen next month. What's going to happen, you know, in, in, in the next presidency? What's, what I don't know, but my eyes are on you. My eyes are on you. 
hey, if the church hasn't learned anything from Isaiah 6, they ought to learn this. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. It doesn't matter who's the king. It does, but it doesn't. At the end of the day, keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your I saw the Lord. He was high and lifted up. In other words, he wasn't brought down. He was high and lifted up. And Jehoshaphat is, is troubled. He doesn't know what to do. And all of a sudden, God speaks to Jehoshaphat, and he says these words. I love the way he says it. God says, you will not need. How do you like that? You will not need. Just tell somebody, you will not need. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He said, you will not need need to fight in this battle. But this battle belongs to me. But he does tell him what he does need to do. And that is to worship. And the Bible said on the next day, Judah went forth, which means praise. And they began to worship. And they began to play their, whatever it was, if it was flutes and uh, I don't even want to say it. Tambourine. <laughs> Tambourines. The most, I'm going to ask Micaiah if he knows this one, but the most interesting musical instrument in the Bible to me is in Daniel. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's called a sack butt. I just think that's one of the most interesting. Yeah, somebody ought to, ought to pick that up. <laughs> oh, help me, Lord. Okay. Praise. When they began to praise, when they began to praise God, listen, the enemy turned on themselves. Tell somebody it's going to turn out okay. It's going to turn out. It's going to turn out. They turned on themselves and they began to fight themselves. I want to finish this. Psalms 34, verse 12. Back to our original text, but let's look at verse 12. I want to read something to you. We'll see hundreds of years later. Verse 12 says this. Who is the man who desires life? Who wants a good life? Okay, Thanksgiving. Who wants a good life? And who wants many, who loves many days that he, he may see good? Who wants to see good days? Keep your tongue from evil. And your lips from speaking deceit, speak the truth. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Okay? First Peter. I'm just going to flip over here to First Peter. First Peter chapter 3. But First Peter, Peter writes this. He, he starts First Peter like this in his introduction. He says, to the chosen... And to the exiles who are scattered throughout the world. And so their lives are uncertain. They're running, fleeing for their lives. But he says, you're chosen. Is that possible? That God's call can be on you and you can still be scattered. Your thoughts are scattered. Your mind is scattered. He said, to the chosen and to the exiled that are scattered. And then he comes around to 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse 10, and I'm going to just read the back part of it because he is actually robbing this from Psalms 34. And he said, He who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. What Peter is saying is what David said. He said, If you want to see good days, Days. Who wants to see good days? Do you want to see good days? If you want to see good days, speak positive. Speak life. Don't, don't go into untruth. Just hang on and trust God. Let peace rise up on the inside of you and begin to bless God. Bless His name. Praise the Lord. I worship you every part of my life. Every essence of my being, I'm going to speak good. I'm going to see good days. You know, the Bible talks in Ephesians 6 about a day of evil. A day, singular. But here, he says, see good days. 
Do you want to see good days? That means I get to praise God today, but I'll praise Him tomorrow, and I'll praise Him a week from now, and I've praised Him for years now because I'm going to see good days. See good days. And the way I do that is I praise Him in advance. Psalm 65 verse 1 says, Praise waits for thee. Come on, Micaiah. It says, Praise waits waiteth for thee. And I know that's King James, but I like to think of that scripture like this. It says, praise waiteth for thee out of Zion. It means that praise gets there first. I'm going to move this because we're going to worship here. It said praise waits on you. Praise gets there in advance. In other words, my praise goes first. I praise before it happens. I worship before it happens. I'm just going to lift God up. Before I see it, I'm going to praise God for it. Kentucky. Went to Kentucky this week. What's Kentucky known for? (laughs) Somebody said bourbon. I knew that was coming. Moonshine. Bluegrass. Bluegrass music. Actual bluegrass. What else? Come on. There's some sports fans in here. Basketball, of course. Not UK. Just UK basketball. No. Basketball. Basketball. Cardinals. UK. Wildcats. Basketball. But you said it. Horses. They're known for the derby. You know, big, big in horses. You know when a horse is in a race I I, I raced horses for 18 years so I know what a horse I know a lot about a horse maybe not as much as most people some people more than most people but I raised them for 18 years and when a horse runs his head let's just let's just look at it like that's his head it's gonna look like a tick tock right here isn't it and if he's racing another horse you know, one horse could actually be in front of the other, but his head back while the other's head stretched out. That's why if it's a photo finish, they go back to those frames and they're just checking one thing. The first one to get its nose across the line or any part of its body. The first one. And as soon as its nose crosses that line, it wins. I don't, I don't know of any that have ever died before they slid through. But I'm just going to say it. For the record, all that has to cross the finish line is its nose. When its nose crossed, even though the body hasn't crossed yet, it's already the winner. Praise. Praise goes ahead. Though you might not see it, it's like the nose of that horse. It has already crossed the finish line. That's why our hands are up. Because we've already won. We're already victorious. We're seated with Him in heavenly places. Praise has already crossed the finish line. And praise just waiteth on the Lord. Because He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of praise. Come on, stand up with me. He's worthy of praise. He's worthy of honor. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. This is a move. This is a move. Yes. This is a move. Come on, begin to praise Him right now. Begin to praise Him. Open your mouth and praise Him. Open your mouth and praise Him. We worship you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. You're worthy to be praised. Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all of his trouble. We look unto you today, Lord. We praise you, Lord. No matter what the situation looks like, we praise you and we worship you.
then we're going to go right into this song because it's time to worship. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's around you. I said it the other word, week, the, uh, the word circumstance comes from being in a circle, being here, and all the troubles are around you. You're standing in the circle. But I want you to know this, that God is for you no matter what the circumstance is. When we put our eyes on Him, we begin to worship Him. Strongholds break. Things that were impenetrable. You get access to things you didn't think you could get access to. Blessings come. The world shifts and shakes according to our praise as we worship, as we lift chains for all. Maybe today you're dealing with some change. It's amazing that during this same year there has been so much so much evil that has surfaced and wickedness not just out of the world but out of the kingdom but I want you to know this no matter where you are there's a Savior and His name is Jesus and Jesus went to a cruel cross to save you and to deliver you and to help you and so that you would have good days. And if you would love life and seek good days, if you would seek the Lord right now, He can take all of that behind you and change it, and everything before you is just a new day. The path of the just is as a shining light that increases more and more to a perfect day. So we're going to go to the Lord right now. Lord, we open up our hearts and we lay our souls bare. We don't want to hide our feelings from you, not you. We don't want to hide our feelings from somebody who would get on a tree, be stripped naked and only covered in blood and the spit of others and would give his life for us so that we could live victorious and free. We don't want to hide our feelings from you. If we failed you, we're sorry. Lord, we repent. We come clean. Lord, we need you. Help us. Help us. Help us. David said, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him. Hear us and deliver. In the name of Jesus, we receive you. We receive you. This is going to be a real thanksgiving. A real thanksgiving because I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for the cross. I'm thankful for my Lord and my Savior. I praise you right now. I worship you right now. I worship you right now. In your heart right now. The Bible said out of your soul begin to praise, begin to worship your mind, your will, and your emotions. For it's God that works in you both the will and to do His good pleasure. He is pleased with our worship. He is pleased with our praise. He expects it. Where are the other nine? Come on. Where are the other nine? What has He brought you from? Where are the other nine? Worship Him. Worship Him. Worship Him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is a mood, yeah.
psalmist said, it is time to move, O oh Lord, for they have made your law void. You know, there are those who have tried to come against the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God always wins. You're on the winning side. You're crossing the finish line, even though you don't see it yet. You're already there. You need to worship God as if, as if everything you're praying for has already happened. It's already taken. All of your children are already saved. I had a beautiful conversation this week with my mother. I was a little worried because it was late at night. But Chloe hadn't done her homework. And she was supposed to interview an old person. I don't think she knows her parents are old people. We called my mother. My mom had, uh, it was really like an interrogation, but my mom had so many beautiful memories, like her first memory. What's your first memory? Your first memory was eating ice cream out of snow. I was like, that's a pretty good memory. And, 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 and her greatest achievement, I thought, well, she might say, you know, my, my husband and I, we passed her for 37 years. My, my husband died. I was 51 years old. I went back to Lee College. And the people I went through with, I graduated so fast, and then I went through a master's program and graduated so fast that they put me, I came back and became a teacher to the same people that were in the early classes with me. I think that's a pretty good achievement. I mean, that's a pretty good achievement. But she said, my greatest achievement is my children and my grandchildren, and that they all love the Lord and are serving the Lord. And I started thinking, are they all loving the Lord and serving the Lord? I started thinking, every child, grandchild. And I said, I thought, I think she's right. I think she's right. But she's right in advance because she's already said, all my children. And my greatest achievement is that all my children and all my grandchildren are serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. This isn't something that's just you know, we do on a weekend. This is something that per perpetuates from generation. The Bible said, one generation shall praise thy works to another. This is one of the things I love about this church. And if you were here at the third service last week when we did the baptism, the Holy Spirit just fell in this room because there was a family and they had been apart and, and they are apart. And I, w I wasn't trying to, to paint a picture that wasn't there, like, oh, God's bringing them together because the kids are in the pool. That wasn't it. But there was healing for every part of that family. That little child came up out of the water full of the Holy Ghost. And it dropped across this room. I'm going to tell you how heavy it was. Men started leaving this room. And I thought, what's wrong? Why are these... Why are people leaving this room? Man, this is this, God is moving right now. And I had wives tell me my husband was crying so bad he had to leave. Man, that's when you know that God is at work. God is at work. God is at work. And I want him to work over your life. This Thanksgiving week, we give him praise. We give him adoration. This is what I live. I believe this with all of my heart. You can take the church away. You can take the job away. But this is what I believe. Worship moves God. Worship moves God. As I said, there, there are too many examples. But I can think about the angel of the Lord. You know, the angel of the Lord, a lot of times in the Old Testament with the capital A is... A Christophany, it's actually Jesus in the Old Testament, the fourth man in the fire. Now think about G Gideon. You know, Gideon was in a day like today because, I mean, there was just conflict everywhere. And God called forth Gideon. And, and this is 
the boldness of Gideon because he had been so shy and so reserved. He was hiding when God found him. But then the angel of the Lord, who is mighty, stands before him. And Gideon says, whose side are you on? I mean, Gideon's about to go to war with the angel of the Lord. Of course, he's going to lose. But he says, whose side are you on our side or on their side? He said, I didn't come to take sides. I came to take over. That's the kind of God we have. Did you know that? He said, I'm not either on yours or theirs. That's what he said. He said, I've come. And then Gideon said, you, you, you represent God. You are God, really. But he says this, and I'll just close with this, because he says, if you wait, I'll make you a meal. Now he goes out and kills, I think it's a goat or a lamb. The angel of the Lord, okay? Did I say that? The angel of the Lord? Possibly Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Sits on a stump, twiddles his fingers. Gideon goes, kills something, brings it back, prepares it, field dresses it, butchers it, cooks it, gives him a plate of food, and then he just touches it and goes up in smoke the amazing thing about that is that he waits on it because he knows that that's an act of worship he'll wait that whole time he's not even going to eat it you know think about praying with God about food bless the hands that prepared it it's not going to nurture your body think about that but he waits the whole term because he knows that that's an act of worship. Your praise is an act of worship that means so much to God. He'll put everything on hold. The universe is on hold because he's doing this to worship me. Lord, we come before you right now with worship, and with adoration, and with thanksgiving. For all that you have done. I've failed you many times, but you have never failed me. And you will never fail me. So I thank you and I praise you and I honor you. And I pray, Lord God, for those who love life and seek good days, that we will be positive. Even during the holidays when we see family that Maybe there's confusion and conflict and definitely contrast, but we will be positive and we will be uplifting and we will worship the Lord and they will see a people that believes that praising God will change things. We love you, Lord, and we are thankful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for tuning in today. If you committed your life to Christ today or you recommitted your life to Christ, fill out an info form at fopchurch.net slash info form so that we can connect with you and be praying for you. Just as a reminder, you can give your tithes and offerings online at fopchurch.net slash give. On our FOP Church app under the giving tab, you can text the amount you want to give to 937-400-1779 or you can mail a check made out to FOP Church to P.O. Box 381, Clarksville, Ohio 45113. You can join us in person at our Clarksville campus on Saturdays at 5.30 p.m., Sundays at 9.30 and 11 a.m., or you can always watch online on Sundays at 11 a.m. on our Facebook, YouTube channel, or our FOP Church app. Thanks for joining us this morning and have an awesome week.